the countries where the the currency is deteriorating you have more emphasis to solve the inflation problem with bitcoin so you're going to have that will be where things perk up in economies that are centralized highly centralized like china um, it would be less of an issue because they are very much a very centralized command and control economy so that's not going to be uh, in the works although when china and russia and iran are now doing a lot of trading deals they are walking away from the dollar and they're trading in their own currencies and they're going to trade in gold and they'll probably trade in bitcoin on the the the, the sovereign level uh, and that will trickle down to the individual level at some point again because once you start to get into go down the bitcoin path it just gets makes more and more sense the more you study it the more you use it the, the more you realize how antiquated and ridiculous the current system is mm -hmm. and this affects everybody Welcome to Unscripted Crypto, where we unravel the complexities of the crypto world. If you're finding our content informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. In today's discussion, we've seen how Bitcoin emerges as a beacon of hope in countries grappling with currency deterioration. It's not just a trend, it's a revolution in financial thinking. In places with centralized economies like China, the approach to cryptocurrency differs, but the global shift towards decentralized finance is undeniable. Recent data shows an increasing trend of nations, including China, Russia, and Iran, moving away from traditional financial systems and embracing alternatives like Bitcoin. This move isn't just at a governmental level, but is trickling down to individuals, reflecting a growing dissatisfaction with the current financial structures. As we dive deeper, remember that Bitcoin's journey is more than just a financial evolution. It's a paradigm shift, reshaping our approach to money and value. As far as having different, you know, uh, folks coming into the Bitcoin space of different political persuasions or different philosophies, ultimately, we all have faith that the Bitcoin is on its own vector. It doesn't need us and it's taking us to a place we want to be because nobody has any control over Bitcoin. It's on its own path. It's taking us somewhere. It, it was the really the discovery of this protocol, which is the discovery of perfect money. And that has impacted our societies and our, even our, our, our species. I mean, you could say that the same way, let's say the, 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 the discovery of fire, you know, had a profound impact on human. Uh, the printing press, the electric light. These things have profound impacts on us as a species, as a culture, as a, as a population. And, you know, it changes the direction, the path that we're on. The, the path that Bitcoin is on, is on, it's on a unique path where it, it, it gets, it crosses over from the physical world into the spiritual world in a lot of ways. You know, I was talking to Jimmy Song um, recently who wrote, he's been writing some great books, including Thank God for Bitcoin. And he made the point that um, the concept of money is, is already an abstract concept to begin with. And that when you use gold, you know, gold is a physical representation of an abstract concept. But when you get into Bitcoin, it's, it's an abstract, more abstract, which is more in keeping with our, our, our psyches in our communal understanding of what money is to begin with. So it's actually we're getting we're getting back to the beginning with Bitcoin. It's it's almost like the the big bang of our consciousness is being restarted. Yeah, you know, we're being reset. The humanity's being they hit the reset button because under the fiat money standard and the gold standard, humanity was heading toward extinction. I would say it's just the it's just the incentives driving the global economy were horrible. So the environments were collapsing um the biological the biospheres are, are collapsing um the ability to maintain billions of people on the planet is not working and just it, it was the whole thing is collapsing it needed to be reset so so bitcoin is that reset button and we're pretty young into it we're only 13 14 years into it but now i think the next five to ten years you'll see that you know that hockey stick moment where you go from kind of grinding along to suddenly 
you know, it, it, it takes a quantum leap and there's huge change in people's consciousness. As we delve deeper into the world of Bitcoin, it's fascinating to see how it transcends mere currency and becomes a symbol of a unified direction, regardless of political or philosophical differences. Bitcoin's trajectory can be likened to significant historical discoveries like fire or the printing press, each altering the course of human history. In our current era, the idea of perfect money, as embodied by Bitcoin, is radically changing our societies and even our species. Its impact is not just economic, it's cultural and existential. By offering a more abstract form of money, Bitcoin aligns more closely with our modern understanding of value, pushing us towards a collective reset. The concept of a Bitcoin standard presents a new global measure of truth, a unifying factor in an increasingly polarized world. It promises a future where our financial systems are not just about transactions, but about establishing a common ground for understanding and interaction. Bitcoin demonetizes violence and war. Because if it's unconfiscatable, it's foolish to come at me with an army to try to take my Bitcoin because no, no, matter, no, no, no amount of violence or coercion will separate me from my private keys. Because if, if they're properly stored, it's unconfiscatable. You know, you, you, there's nothing to do. So the idea of maintaining standing armies becomes kind of foolish because you can't take the property. The property is unconfiscatable. So you, the only way you can get some of their, some of my Bitcoin is to come to me and say, oh, I want you to sell, uh, I have some art I'd like you to buy, or I have a service that you need and I'll, and I'll do it for Bitcoin. So that's peace. So it monetizes peace. It monetizes love where, and it demonetizes war. So that's the fact. And that's an economic reality. And it's tied to the thing that people deal with every second of their lives Every second of your life, there's somebody sending you a bill somewhere, some insurance company, some streaming service, some you know bank. Then there's a bill heading your way. And then every moment you check your thing, your iPhone, it's a bing. You know, you've got another charge, right? So mm -hmm. that is draining, draining our collective consciousness to the point of, of becoming collectively brain dead, you know, humans. The walking corpses, the Aldous Huxley version of Brave New World, where we're just on the Soma and the Casino Gulag, and we're effectively, collectively dead. Bitcoin fixes this. And it, re it resets. It goes back to the individual and individual responsibility and individual personality and individual freedom. You know the, the the and but it does so in this decentralized way, in this open source way. So in a lot of ways, you know, it's interesting. There's there's a lot of paradoxes within the the Bitcoin ecosystem, and in this way, it rep, it reflects some of the finest art and poetry that we have created over the millennia. Uh, our species it is full of paradox and and simile and and metaphor, and you, you know this is how we get along through life is by differentiating between light and dark and between right and wrong. And, you know, we're constantly making these thoughts in our head and how do we fit? So, so Bitcoin having a Bitcoin standard means you have a one global measure of truth. Everyone maps to that truth. So it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, as long as you have some mapping to the Bitcoin standard, you and I can have a conversation because we have some commonality. Everyone mm -hmm. ultimately will have some degree of commonality. Whereas today in a fiat money world, we have um, fanatical opposition and no commonality. The, the, the people who are, at, who are killing each other this month <laughs> consider themselves to have no commonality. They consider themselves to be mutually exclusive. You know, this world's not big enough for both of us. So right. one of us has to die. Right. So that's there's no commonality whatsoever. But that's a fiat money system, because every time you make a mistake in a fiat money world, you can just print more money. And if you're the person printing the money, then you can take the moral high road and say, well, I'm right because I'm printing the money. Right. That that proves I'm right, because look at my bank account. I've got all this printed money in my bank account. That means I'm right. That's my righteous. Mm -hmm. That's my moral prerogative. I'm right because I have a lot of printed money. And 
So the other side says, oh, yeah, well, we're going to print a lot of money. Okay. So now what happens? Well, you have inflation, <laughs> right? So and that's inflation just broke out. And it's not going to go down anytime soon because you've got people at war. Ultimately, the weapon of choice is money printing. The Pentagon is a giant money printer. It sucks up 50% of our tax revenue to support nuclear subs, you know, in the middle of the ocean to go sail around um, to try to defend property that's indefensible when you compare it to Bitcoin, which is actually the only true property that's unconfiscatable, separates money from state. So this is all, these are all changes that are happening. And this is what the institutional money is realizing, the Black Rocks and these other folks about Bitcoin. And so you're going to see a rotation out of these other assets like stocks and bonds and property and gold. They all get demonetized. All that flows into Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin price continues to head toward a million, two million, five million. And all these other things just continue to be um, demonetized and uh, end up like the Venezuelan Boulevard, just litter, garbage in the street that people just, you know, use it to, as, uh, to line their cat boxes. By being non-confiscatable, Bitcoin creates a world where coercion and physical force lose their financial incentives. It's a monumental shift from the traditional financial systems where monetary printing often fuels conflict and inequality. This new paradigm promotes peace and cooperation, emphasizing the need for mutual benefit in transactions. It's a stark contrast to the fear and scarcity mindset fostered by traditional financial systems. Bitcoin isn't just a currency. It's a catalyst for a more conscious, connected, and humane world. As we witness the global economy transitioning, with major institutions recognizing Bitcoin's potential, we're not just observing a financial shift, but a societal transformation. The future of Bitcoin is not just about its valuation, but about the fundamental change it brings to our world. We're curious to hear your thoughts. How do you think Bitcoin will shape our future? Share your views in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Unscripted Crypto for more insightful discussions.